Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be working on this 2003 Yamaha Grizzly 660. This will be a longer video, but don't be discouraged. This job anyone can do. So what we will be doing on this four-wheeler today is replacing the carburetor. This procedure will be the same for any Yamaha Grizzly from 2002 to 2007. This four-wheeler, I was told, has not been run in a number of years. So I've already replaced the tires on it and got a new battery for it. At the end of this video I will show you an easy trick to make it easier to remove your battery when needed. Upon starting up this four wheeler I noticed right away we had a carburetor issue. You can find a new carburetor for this machine on Amazon for roughly between $40 to $50. So let's get started. First things first you will need to remove the seat. Clearly there is no battery in this four wheeler. But if yours is in, I recommend disconnecting it at this time. After disconnecting the battery, you can take the lid off the airbox, which is held in by five metal clips. Once the lid is removed, take out the air filter. As you can see in the bottom of the airbox, there is fuel and you can very easily smell the gas. This tells me the carburetor isn't functioning correctly. If you look just in front of the airbox, you can see the carburetor located just under the gas tank. So the next step is to take off both of the plastic side panels on the four-wheeler. These are very simple to remove and come off with a simple tug being held in only by plastic. After removing the side panels, to remove the plastic cover over the gas tank you will need to take out these two 10mm bolts found on both sides of the four wheeler. Once the two bolts are removed, again, pop loose the plastic that wraps around the front display. Again, this is only held in by plastic clips, so you should easily be able to loosen it. Once loosened, pull back on the plastic slightly and you will see a Phillips head screw on both sides of the display holding the plastic cover over the tank. Remove both of these Phillips screws and then the plastic cover will lift off the tank. Next is to unplug the fuel meter. This is why I recommend disconnecting the battery. Sometimes this is hard to grip with your fingers, so grab a pair of pliers and pull straight back towards the back end of the four-wheeler and it will slide right out. Now we need to remove the fuel tank itself. Start by removing the two 10mm bolts at the rear end of the tank. Then you will also find two 10mm bolts at the front of the tank. It will help to have a ratchet and an extension for the part where the bolts are located at the front of the tank.
Again, they are found by simply pulling back on the plastic around your front display a little, and you will see the two bolts holding the tank into place, one on either side of the tank. Before removing the tank, you need to disconnect the fuel line from the tank to the carburetor. So this here is your fuel shutoff valve. Right behind this shutoff, you will see the fuel line here that connects from the tank to the carburetor. This is held on by a simple clamp that all you need is a set of pliers to be able to disconnect the line. Once the line is disconnected, you can remove the tank. I did not zoom out here so you can see how the fuel shutoff comes out with the tank. So when removing the tank, you have to be careful in guiding it out without breaking it. It will take some patience and some wiggling, but it will come out. Once the tank is removed, you can clearly see the top of the carburetor now, but there is a plastic guard still in the way, held on by some pins in the front. First, let's remove the lid from the airbox, where the hose just slides right off the lid. Then the pins in the front of the plastic guard are easily removed with a flathead screwdriver. Once the two plastic pins are removed, the plastic shield will come off. Again, just be patient while removing and be careful of the wires on the left hand side of the four wheeler as you work the plastic guard off.
Next we need to remove the air box. Simply remove the two Phillips head screws on the back end of the air box. Then disconnect the hose clamp on the front of the air box. Again only needing a Phillips head screwdriver here to loosen up the clamp so you are able to slide the air box right out. Once the airbox is out of the way, we need to remove the hose that runs from the carburetor to the airbox by loosening up the hose clamp on the carburetor and then sliding the hose off. To fully remove the carburetor you will need to disconnect your throttle cable which is the cable here as well as the choke cable which is also found here. First I will disconnect the choke which is easily done with just a set of pliers. When you pull the choke out this is what it should look like. Make sure the spring and everything comes out with it. Then I will be disconnecting the hose clamp on the front of the carburetor. This will allow me to pull the carburetor back and give me more room to work on the throttle cable. Again this hose clamp is simply held on by a Phillips head screw. As you can see, I now can easily work on the throttle cable. The first step in removing the throttle cable is to remove the cover that is held in by three Phillips head screws. After removing the cover there is a coupling nut where the cable feeds into the carburetor. Take a marker and put a line on the coupling nut so when removing you can count how many full turns it takes to remove it. This will be important to remember when putting the new carburetor on. Once marking the coupling nut simply take a pair of pliers and loosen the nut. Again when removing do not forget to count how many full turns it takes to remove the nut. Once this is complete, it's time to remove the cable. It's pretty easy to do with just a screwdriver. Just lightly pry and work the cable outwards over the idle cam. Again, just be patient and do not try to force it. It will come out. Lastly, take the pin at the end of the cable off. Depending on the design, you may have to twist or turn the knob at the end of the cable.
Last thing is to remove the front rubber hose held on by a hose clamp with an allen key screw. Having a long extension for the allen key makes this part much easier. First we need to put our front hose back on. The carburetor I ordered came with a new one. If your carburetor doesn't come with a new one, that is okay. You can just reuse the hose you removed. This front hose has a groove in it. Make sure to line it up when placing it back on the four wheeler. Once placed back on the four wheeler, use a long extension and allen key to tighten down the hose clamp. Once that is done, take the new carburetor and remove the rubber guard where you will feed the throttle cable into. Feed the throttle cable into the hole in the carburetor and place the pin that you remove from the cable back onto the end of the cable. It should slide in and then twist. Once the pin is placed back onto the cable, fit it over the idle cam. Again, be patient and use a screwdriver to help guide the cable over the idle cam and into the designated slot for the cable pin. At this point, you should be able to work the throttle on your handlebars and see the idle cam work as designed. Next, you need to thread back on your coupling nut. This is where the line that you made with your marker becomes important. Line up the line that you made with your marker where you can see it. And as you thread on the coupling nut, count the number of full circles, again matching the same number that you counted when taking the coupling nut off. Once that is complete, you can see the idle cam is working as designed. Once complete, place the cover back over the throttle housing. Make sure to place a small gasket into the groove on the carburetor before placing on the cover. Do not twist the cover to line up the holes for the screws because then you will mess up the placement of the gasket. When placing the cover, line up the holes as you place it down and then hold down firmly with your thumb or another finger while placing all the screws to hold the cover on tightly.
Once the throttle is put back together, we can now place the carburetor into the four-wheeler. Take the carburetor and feed it into the rubber hose you have already mounted, and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten down the hose clamp. Now feed the carb overflow line down through the four-wheeler as seen in the video. On the carburetor, remove the plastic cover, then install the rubber hose that goes from the carburetor to the air box. Again, using a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten down the hose clamp. Once done, place your airbox back into the four-wheeler and connect it to the rubber hose from the carburetor and tighten down the hose clamp using your Phillips head screwdriver. Then tighten down the back end of the airbox with your two Phillips head screws. You can now place your air filter back into the airbox. Now we need to attach the choke cable. Take apart the end of the choke cable by pulling back on the spring and the end will slide right off, similar to the throttle cable. Then take the old spring off. A new spring and end for the choke cable should have come with your carburetor. Place the new spring on the cable. Pull it back so you are able to slide the new end onto the choke cable.
Then feed it into the hole on the carburetor and make sure to thread it in by hand. Once started by hand, take your pliers and tighten it down. Next we need to place the plastic guard that goes under the gas tank back on. Be patient with this, again be careful the wires are on the left side of the four wheeler as you move the plastic guard back into place. Make sure to run the hose for the airbox through the plastic as well as you put it back into place. Once in place, line up the two holes towards the front of the four-wheeler and put back in both plastic push pins. Then you can connect the lid to the airbox back to the hose seen in the video. Now take your gas tank and place it on the four-wheeler, sliding it back into place. Make sure to again be patient while doing this, working the fuel shut off through the plastic guard and past the wiring. Once in place, take the two 10mm bolts and thread them in by hand in the back end of the gas tank, but do not tighten these down fully just yet. Before tightening these down, make sure to start both the 10mm bolts in the front of the gas tank as well. Remember to pull back slightly on the plastic around the front display, revealing the threaded holes that the bolts are fed through. Again, there is one per side of the four-wheeler. Once all four of these bolts are started, then you can go around the tank and tighten down all four bolts.
After the tank is bolted down, place the lid on the airbox and clamp it down with the metal clamps on the airbox. We now need to connect the fuel line from the tank to the carburetor. Take the rubber protective cover off the carburetor, then take the fuel line and slide it under the carburetor. Use a set of pliers to pinch the hose clamp and slide it into place to hold the hose tightly on the carburetor. Then follow the same process connecting the hose to the tank located right behind the fuel shutoff. Then plug in the fuel meter on top of the fuel tank. Once the fuel meter is plugged in, we can now put the plastic cover back on the fuel tank. Simply feed this over the tank. Again, you may need to wiggle and adjust it a little to get everything to line up in place. When everything is lined up again, put back on the plastic around the front display slightly and put in the Phillips head screws again, holding the front of the plastic cover down. When that is done, line up the holes on the back end of the plastic cover and put in the two 10mm bolts to tighten down the back side of the plastic cover. Place on your plastic side covers on both sides of the floor wheeler. Lastly, reconnect the battery. Now before placing the battery back in the hole that is honestly a pain to get the battery out of, Find yourself an old ratchet strap that no longer works or you no longer use and cut a part of it off. When placing the battery down in the hole, simply run the ratchet strap underneath the battery. As you can see, now it is much easier to lift the battery out if I ever need to swap the battery or remove the battery for winter storage. At this point, connect your battery and place the seat on the floor wheeler and this job is done. Thanks again for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and share the video.